Sten Morgan here. I hope you're doing well. I want to announce that we are launching the How to Be an Elite Advisor course. We are combining all of our best teachings and ideas into a course that you can complete in less than a week. I want to share with you the best ideas that I implement within my practice that have helped me achieve more than I ever thought possible. I want to share how I have unique meetings with clients. What's the mindset of an elite advisor? How do you prospect in a way that'll separate you from other advisors? At the Elite Advisor Network, we reject average. I want to help you see what your full potential is and reach it faster. Set time aside this week to take the course. Click on the link or go visit gobeelite.com. We'll talk to you soon. Dave, welcome to the podcast, brother. I'm glad you're here. Good to be here, brother. Excited to uh, talk marketing and all things uh, marketing for financial advisors. Yes. This is a topic uh, that I get excited about, but I have a lot of uh, frustrating memories around because like a lot of advisors, I get into the business and I just need more clients. And step one is just grind it out. It's like me, people knock on doors. And the eventual dream is how can I... How can I build a business with some systems that, that attract clients to me with less sheer effort? And so in, in my journey, you know, I, I started making enough revenue where I was like, well, maybe I can outsource some of this. And I met some firms that would you know, update my website. They would maybe put some posts online. And, you know, I might be spending a thousand or three thousand dollars a month. Things weren't really quite measured. The timelines were kind of loose. And and I would start and stop these different initiatives a lot. And at the end of the day, nothing meaningfully changed my business. And as we've gotten more in the coaching side with the podcast, speaking events, I'm realizing this is more common in our business that I wasn't just a one-off. And so I'd love at a high level for you to lean in, kind of like, what's your background? What have you learned about marketing? And then as we kind of dial into like, what are best practices that advisors can take away today to avoid making the common marketing mistakes and either decide I'm just going to brute force this on my own. But if I do do marketing, I know how to do it the right way. Yeah, dude, that's a great question. So, but yeah, just a quick background on me. So I have, I'm actually trained as a sports chiropractor. Um, and when I was in practice, well, actually be, when I was in school, it was right when Facebook ads started to become a thing. And I actually started to run Facebook ads for chiropractors and health businesses while I was actually in school to become a chiropractor. And then once I got out of school, um, I went into practice with my brother-in-law and we were, I mean, for those of you that go to the chiropractor, we were seeing over a thousand patients a week in 26 hours. And the reason why is we figured out our marketing, we figured out our marketing flywheel. So I know we're going to get into the flywheel here more in the minute, but we figured out this is the, like, part of it for, for a lot of us is, you know, and you mentioned like a lot of people will come and you'll see an ad or someone will approach you and say, Hey, I'll do this for you. I'll write a blog for you. or I'll do an SEO for you and all those things. And they don't know the space. They don't know the clients, right? They don't know what you know when it comes to the, 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 the things that you deliver. And I think, you know, in marketing and in sales, Stan, it's, it's, I, I have no traditional marketing experience, but I'll, I'll finish with, I'll, actually, I'll finish that thought there. After I had worked with my brother in law, I started working with a, with a guy named Dr. Axe. And if you guys are in, any of you guys know Dr. Axe, he's, he built a massive supplement brand, online brand. I mean, the email list as, you know, over 10 million uh, emails, like we really built out that entire brand um, to, to a great exit. Um, and then uh, uh, moving forward, I've, I mean, I've worked with Sten now for several years and, and with many others, but I have no traditional marketing experience. I don't, I, I never went to school to be a marketer. I'm one of 10 kids. So I think that as the second youngest, you kind of have to be a marketer just to get fed. Um, but I think that so many people, because they don't know it, because we're advisors, not marketers, anybody that says that they're a marketer and they're passionate about it, it's like, hey, we'll bring you in, we'll try you out. But there's no plan and they don't know the industry. And so where I kind of cut my teeth was I was working on the people that I was marketing to. And I knew the industry that I was marketing to. And I think at the end of the day, like when it comes down to marketing and even sales, what I was going to mention earlier, like even sales, it's said, if I was the financial advisor and I was approaching you and you were my perfect client, right? I would focus first on serving you than I would selling you, right? So serving before selling. And that doesn't mean giving away all your stuff for free. 
right? But it's serving before selling. So Stan, something that you're great with, um, you're great about, and I, you know, we're obviously, I see you all the time and we run in the same friend groups and men's groups is whenever someone is going through like a, a, a challenge or there's like, Stan is always there to serve. Like he's always there to bring in his input, his wisdom. And it's always good. Like he is being an advisor before the money is actually paid. Right. And I think that sometimes now some of us can give that free advice to everybody and we're always giving everybody free advice. But if you're strategically giving free advice to or serving people that um, are your prospective audience or friends with your prospective audience, I've gotten I've sent so many people to Sten because Sten's done so much for me and he did a lot for me before we I even paid him. And even at his friend, I still paid him because the advice was that valuable. And so my point is, is that I think that we need to get back to the basics then. I think that we like before you scale online with SEO and all these other things, whatever you decide to do, it's really important to get back to the basics and think about who is our audience and where are they hanging out? Are they sitting on Facebook and scrolling around and talking all the time? Are they, um, are they searching for blogs on Google? Like where are they hanging out in our town? Right. What are the things that they like to do? You know, and so we can talk more about some of the strategies behind that, but that's where I think the biggest problem, especially with niche audiences is, I mean, you go to the marketing events that we go to at strategists and financial advisors, chiropractors, the top of the list, best industry to get into. You can sell them on anything. They have no clue what we're doing. And you, even if they get you for three months, they're still making their money, you know? And so you're on the, you're in the bullseye or the target of a lot of these marketers. It's really important for us as advisors to, to understand the space and then do the things that work. Yep. I love that. Let's pause on that. Cause I think you just called out that, and I, I wouldn't have known that being part of the target audience, but you, you're saying I'm going and hanging out with the top marketing people, marketing minds. And a lot of times at those events, the best ones come and their ideas trickle down and affect the, probably the marketing industry. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Is that you're saying there are specific business owner markets that you guys would say are the best target audience for marketers, meaning they have a desire, they probably have money, and, and you would say and they have no clue money. what they're doing. Yeah, and you would yeah, it's an untapped money. space. Okay, so the call out is: is everybody listening? We're in the financial advisor space. I, I wouldn't say that these people are nefariously going after us, but they're probably saying let's heavily target this group of these business owners because. They have a need. They probably have money to pay and they don't really quite, they're maybe not a discerning buyer. Yeah. They don't understand marketing. They understand going on. So when, when someone like, let's just say you as a advisor and you're like, man, I really need clients, right? Um, Hey, we're coming into tax season. I want to get, I want to get some good clients coming in for me. It's not about like, you're in a place where you're almost at risk to be pulled in by some of these agencies. Instead, I, I'm saying by no means are all agencies bad. I just think that there's a process of really understanding your marketing engine that we'll talk about. We'll go through the strategy of it, but really understanding your marketing engine. It adds a, a, a paid marketing company. Should, all they should be doing is taking what you're currently doing and scaling it to a larger group, right? So instead of you having one-on-one conversation, they're having one to 50 conversations but you already have the strategy. And that's where I think that most small businesses in these spaces go, these spaces go off. I'll just do the chiropractor as an example. There'll be two or three things that they do really, really well that drives p- p- patients in, right? And then they want to go to scale online and they do something in a completely different space. It's like, you already do these three things really, really well. Like maybe you do um, monthly events, right? Where you have health events, where you have people come in and they go online and they're selling vouchers to try to drive people into the, you know, to come and see them. It's like, it's just really important that m- you remember this marketing online, digital marketing, online marketing is just going to take what you're already doing that's working or not working. And it's just going to scale it. Right. Right. And so it's really important that for us as advisors, we get clear on here is the way that it works. Right. Here is what the, the 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 focus is that we need to, that we the things that we need to focus on, and it's different for every town, right? But we know our clients the best. If you're listening to this, you've probably already gotten clients. I would ask yourself right now, as you're listening to this, if you could write down the top three ways that you've gotten clients up to this point, that right there, whatever you write down. So if you're thinking about, here's the top way that I've 
top ways that I've got clients. Those three ways are the seeds for great online marketing. Don't go and think that someone else some something, some better way. They just know, marketers just know how to scale it, right? They, already, they know how to scale what works. So I just would, I would ask you, like, as you're thinking about this, like, what are the things that got me to where I was? Was it word of mouth? Was it, was like, were you speaking? Were you, you know, what was, what were the things that, um, that got you to this point to get, you know, the results that you've gotten? And let's, let's start by focusing on how can we make those things better, you know, versus let's add all these new things in. I think what, what's, what frustrates me and I, and I, I feel comfortable saying this because I was on both sides of it. I was, uh, unaware that I was living in a system that was really generic and broad with language. And now that I've, I've tried to break out of it and have people like you around me, I can see it a little more clearly now that most advisors, the path to success is very average. It's just brute force, try to get enough business, keep saying the same general things. It's pretty much every advisor is saying, and eventually you may become successful. So my fear for the industry and really everybody listening today is that there's a chance they're still using the same generic language of like, I'm a financial advisor, how to retire successfully. <clears throat> and they're going to think like, oh, I want to scale this super general message. And so how, how do you even become aware of like, if somebody's thinking like, oh, Dave, here are the three things I've done, but those three things have barely made them successful. Like those three things have allowed them to survive, but not thrive. How do they first assess? Like, am I even doing the right things before I even think about scaling? Yeah. Yeah, you know, it's a really good question. I probably would point that one right back to you is like, what are, what are the things that you see are, you know, working the best? Cause, cause my advice to you is look at like, if you're listening to Sten, you're doing the first part of the work is done. Get advice, advice from wise counsel. Like if you're looking at what you're doing, like, and this is your business, this is your life. This is what you're spending the majority of your time on, right? Away from your family and your kids. It's like, it's important to think who, not how. Instead of thinking, how do I, and so I know you talk about this a lot, but like, instead of how do I figure out the best marketing thing, or if this is the best, who are the who's, who are the people that are crushing it and what are they doing? You know, and I could share a little bit about you because I, you've been very successful in this space and, and the things that I think that you do unconsciously that support. And I've already talked about that a little bit, but it's really important that you're not just another financial advisor. It's really important that you become a you are advi- you're an advisor in your town for finances. You are the Gandalf of finances in your town, right? You're wise counsel, right? And I think that's so important because you can go around and try to find people and have one-on-one conversations versus be in the conversation, right? If there's things going on at the, in the town, like I get a lot of clients for my, my stra- strategic consulting agency because I go to the Nashville Ball. And I, when, when I'm hanging and talking with people in the basketball wall and I have an opportunity to give some value, I help people with their business, right? And Sten, I see you do this all the time. Like you're constantly going around, you're planning an event. You have an event coming up in Nashville in a couple of weeks where you're going to, you're bringing people in to an event and you're teaching them, you know, things like how, like how to uh, pay your kids and how, so you're giving them things that they're thinking about and you're giving them free stuff. This is a marketing principle. If this is what, if people will sell, tell themselves, this is what the, if this is what the free stuff is, I can't imagine what the paid stuff is. I had that exact experience with Sten. When I first met Sten, we were in Bible study together and, you know, we were just friends. We, we did some lake stuff together. And during that time, and I'm not saying this is how you, you know, the only way, but like during that time, Sten gave me the advice that he gave me at different moments. Like I'm, I'm not a financial guy. Like I don't, I, I find this is my weakness, right? But like the advice that you gave me was so good that it was like, I can't imagine what the paid stuff is. Dude, can we schedule a meeting and let me pay you to advise me? And it transformed my life, right? Like it transformed my business, my finances. So what I would say is, is that if you're doing three things and one of them does not include becoming known in your town, not just known as, oh, I'm a financial advisor. No, you're known as the guy that has wise counsel on finances. So then, and are you okay if I go into a little bit of strategy here, Sten? Sure, yeah, jump in. So this is what I would do. Instead of giving free advice to everyone, and I'm not saying that Sten strategically chose me to give advice to because he was doing the same thing with all of our friend group. But you want to think about people that are regularly with the town, okay? So those are people like pastors. If you, give your, you, have, you go to a church, meet with your pastor and say, hey, I'd love to um, consult and advise you at no cost. Because that pastor 
everybody else is going to come to him with financial issues, right? They're going to say, hey, here's the person that or that needs help with their finances or they're around and having dinner with people. Yeah, this is the guy that I use. It's Sten Morgan. He's awesome. You know how many times I'd send people to Sten because I'm in spaces where where, you know, Sten has blessed me and then I'm in spaces where I'm with high level people and they're talking about money. And I'm like, there's a friend that, you know, a, a friend of mine that's going through a divorce and she's got this money coming in and she's like, what do you, she's, what do you do about money? I'm like, I just go to Sten. Like Sten is my advisor. He's my, my wise counsel on that. So if part of your strategy is not to become the wise count, and that's something I'm working on with, or we're working on right now is like, I become more and more known in the town. One more example of that. Uh, a client that I was working with, he worked with people that had um, injuries. So he would, he would work with uh, financial uh, um, insurance injury c- cases, right? So car, car injuries, things like that. And he bought, he lives in Miami. He got a suite. You guys, this is not like a new strategy, but he got a suite at the Miami stadium and every game he invited, he had a team that just invited doctors and different people, you know, to that, that lawyers to that suite. And then during, in that, he would give them advice and they would send all of his clients to them, all of their clients to them. Right. And so my point is, is that like, you need to think about ways and everybody's unique, right? Sten, you like to be out on the lake. Like, you know, get five clients to go. You got a boat? To get five clients to come out the lake. Find opportunities to where you can be in groups of people that have influence and support them. Or find people like your pastors, um, the head of your sheriff department. Um, maybe that's not a good example. Maybe sheriff department. But like your head of your people that are known in the town that are talking to these people. Hey, top, top companies in the town. Hey, I want to come in and just support you. Right. And so, yes, if you have three things and you're doing three things, but none of them include becoming known, people are like, Oh, I need to build a brand. Brand is about service, right? That's all it is. It's your reputation, right? So if your reputation in your third town is either there's no reputation or your reputation is, Oh, that's the financial advisor. I didn't need, when I went to Senate, I didn't need financial advisor. I needed advice on finances, but I didn't think like, Oh, I need to hire a financial advisor for this. Like, do I have this thing going on? And so you just want to become known as the wise counsel. And when you do that, you become the talk of the town and then it's game over, right? Everybody that's got issues, your phone ring off the hook because you be, you kind of reached critical mass where enough people know about you and you've served enough people that. You know, and obviously you got to be good, good at what you do, but it's, but that, that, that would be one thing that I would say, hands down for all of you, if you're not doing that, you must do it down. Yeah. And I'd say, must, I, don't I, rely well, on, on social media. Yeah. Yeah. I moved to Nashville. Go ahead. If somebody would have told me, Hey, become known in your town, that would have been pretty daunting. And so I think it took, it took years. Um, and it could have been faster if I focused on, becoming less of a salesperson, more of this product earlier on, but it took me some time to kind of break out of the industry, get better at selling stuff to solve problems versus like just be this bank of great ideas that people can access at different times. And so advisors, as you're, as you're listening, that is the ultimate goal. What Dave says is get be specific about the people you're getting around, but you may feel like you're not equipped to do that yet. We spend a lot of time in our community and our live events on this. Like you are the product. And so if you have a lack of confidence in those interactions, there's, there's some confidence gap there that you need to either say, I just need to get better at communicating because I have all the knowledge. I just don't know how to share it. Or no, I, I, I know the people. I just don't feel confident because I just don't have the ideas. Knowledge will you know, study up. Like our profession is one that should be on the same level as attorneys and doctors. It's like what we do is important. Uh, so as, as you say that, that's kind of the longer goal. I think there's a really helpful principle of knowing the difference between average and elite. Am I doing average behavior or is like what Dave was trying to rattle off was like, those were elite activities that take some creativity and effort. One thing I want to kind of sit on because I see this a lot is, okay, advisors do a lot of generic LinkedIn posts. And for some reason, they all keep doing it. Every once in a while, I see one that's doing it differently that kind of catches my eye. But let's unpack a little bit that specific activity on like, is it worth it at all? Or yes, that's a good thing. You just have to do it differently. And should there be a bunch of advisors that just stop doing it tomorrow because it's really not the best use of their time? Yeah, I think it's good to master one thing at a time that works. So like if LinkedIn is your thing, 
then just posting once a week a generic post will do absolutely nothing. So if that's what you're doing, stop it immediately. You're actually doing more harm than good. Have you ever tried to talk to someone that you don't have a relationship with, with and you're trying to explain something to them? It's like, it's like when someone calls you, you know, when you get that spam call and they're trying to sell you like a new auto, you know, insurance policy. And you're like, we have no relationship. I don't know you. Now, if, if Stan had told me that, hey, there's a great group, um, you know, great auto insurance group. That's really great. And they're good. And, and I, I give them your name. They might call you today. Hey, I listen to them, but I don't know them. Right. And so because you don't have a relationship, you can't have conversation. So yes, in that scenario, I would not be posting at all on LinkedIn. You're just taking up people's fees and really nobody's seeing it. It's just a waste of time, right? And that's very generic, right? So yes, I mean, the, 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 the short and full answer to that is I would absolutely stop. Now, if you feel like, you know, I have a passion for LinkedIn, I have a passion for community thought, com- communicating thoughts on LinkedIn, but to be honest with you, that wouldn't be in the first, you know, first probably top two or three or four or five strategies that I would give to an advisor would be to get on LinkedIn. You're local to your town. Again, if you're an online presence and you want to get a lot of people all over the States and that's kind of your strategy and how you go about it, you need to become a thought expert online. So it's the same thing we just talked about in your town. You got to do that online. So you got to get creative. You got to think outside the box. You got to see what other people are doing online, other advisors, and you want to go the direction. If you're working in your town, it's what we just talked about. And I, and I want to say something, Stan, like, I think what you said is so powerful is if you don't feel comfortable at the Boy Scouts Association when your son's doing the race and you're talking to somebody, if you don't feel comfortable having a conversation that supports them, get like, get there. And, and if you're not, if you don't want to get there, then you don't want to be elite. Like, this is why it's not the place for you, you know, because like, if you want to be the best in the world, like it's going to take some work, but it's really important that like, and, and by the way, being creative about getting some of these connections, it's like, no, like go to, like go to things like don't, don't, don't just like actually it can, and it can be fun, you know, like, but actually go to things, you know, like you get people from men's groups, from Bible studies, from um, go, like I, I go shooting with a group of guys and one of them just reached out to me yesterday and was like, dude, I want to talk to you about some work um, to be, a, you know, to be a client, like. And he's a perfect client for me, you know? So you gotta be, you gotta be, you know, strategic about how you go about, but if I were you, just because I want to move on from that topic for, without like an action step, if I were you, I would take out a pen and paper right now and I would write down what are 10, you can call it a giver's gift. What are 10 things, 10 areas where I know there are people there that I could serve at no charge to them? Just give free advice to like the bowl. Right. Like, like, um, again, it's not like, you know, you're not going to the pub crawl, you know, you're probably maybe, oh, maybe the pub, pub crawl might be, not be terrible. Maybe the first couple hours of it, you yeah. know, but you get what I'm saying? Like think strategically of how, like one of the st- things that I'm working on with Stan, I hope you don't, I hope it's okay to share this, but we can delete it if, if, but, um, you're gonna say yes. I know Stan is an open book. So, so, but Stan is like, Stan is planning an event where he has a very specific topic right? That's meaningful to people with wealth, right? And then what we're doing is we're reaching out to different people that we know would want. And part of this is Sten has already built relationships with a lot of people in the town that if I say Sten's doing something, people are like, okay, of course I'll jump into that. Like, yes, I'd love to do that. Right. And so I've been getting his team, like a list of people, like all my contacts. I'm like, I know Sten is good. I already have his trust. And now I just passed over trust to somebody else, right? The people that trust me, I said, stand someone you can trust. They're feeling, so that's like a simple way where you could go to all of these events, be providing advice to people. And then maybe once a month, you have an event, you know, at your office or at Top Golf or whatever, whatever your thing is, or shooting guns. And as you're bringing all these people together and that's your time where you, now it's like, okay, now I can talk about this stuff. When you first meet someone, it's like walking up to a girl at the mall and you're single and you're like, hey, will you marry me? It's like, no, and I don't really know you, you know, it's like, no, get to know people in your town. You should know the mayor. You should know these different people. If the mayor's doing a fundraising dinner for his next campaign, you're at that freaking fundraising dinner and you're, you're giving money to them. Like there's going to be high level people there, you know? I love that. 
And so I think the there's advisors that would thrive in that environment. I know my natural personality, especially when I moved to town, was not to like be a socialite. But what I hear you saying is that you should become so confident in the value you add. You should enjoy your job so much that whatever scenario you end up in, you kind of radiate good ideas. That it doesn't feel like effort. Where early on, it felt like effort to me because I was like, I'm I'm a financial advisor, but like I don't know really who I help. I'm not really sure what my unique value add is. And for me, and any advisor listening, like that should trigger you to say, okay, maybe there's a gap somewhere that I need to fill in. And so what Dave's saying is, don't stop doing any generic activity right now. Like do do an assessment of your yeah. marketing prospecting activity, and if you're not super confident in it and you don't have results, stop doing it. So where does that leave you? That leaves a lot of advisors saying, okay, well, then what should I do? As opposed to just random activity to feel good. And besides knocking on doors, because eventually we want to try to scale something. What is this system, this strategy? If we kind of step into the framework, and I've heard from you, you know, over the years, how can we give them some general idea of, of what to do next? And we spend a lot of time in our coaching and our online community on this. How do you communicate? And how do you make elite? action steps as opposed to average ones. We have advisors setting up stuff all the time. We're like, that's, that's, that's weak. That's weak. That's weak. So your filter needs to get better, but also welcome advice and feedback from other people. But where can they go from here? What is a, a process they can hold to moving forward? Yeah. And before I say that, the number one process, and you could throw all everything I say after this out the window is be a part of, of a community. I know Sten has a community. I don't know if there's other communities out there, but I know Sten's community is very solid. I'm part of that community. I, I support that community. Um, be around people that are better than you, yeah. right? If you're around mediocrity, med- mediocrity then you're going to have mediocre results. Just be around people that are better. This is more of a who than a how problem because we, if you're listening to this, like, oh, this, it's starting to stir ideas. Well, what if you talk to 10 other advisors that were having success and they're giving you, oh, I do these three things. Oh, I do these five things. Oh, I do this. Like you... Part of coming up with the idea is it's being around other people that can help to create ideas, but also like, hey, I've been doing this, this, and this for the last 10 years. Like, I remember someone came to us and was like, and I'll get into that answer, Sten. Someone came to us and was like, um, how do you fill, like, how have you filled, um, like, your practice so fast? And I was like, um, I went to the football, I, I, I thought about who are the people that know the most people in the town that have pain. And then I went to the head school, the football coach. I got the football coach under care. I gave him free care. I said, Hey, I'm going to take care of you for free. And then he got in. He obviously like, I'm good at what I do. I got, we got the results for him. He was like, I want the entire team now to get adjusted. Like, can you do that? I said, Hey, I'll come three times during the season. I'll just, I'll take care of the entire team. Then I got a shirt that said chiropractor on my back. And then I was on the sidelines of the field. And then I was running on the field whenever there was an injury and everybody was seeing our brain or our business. We got hundreds of people from that community to come to our school because like of that idea. So that's just one idea, right? And I've given that to other people. They've done the exact same thing. And so my point is, is that like the ideas that you need to come up with, just like people that come to you for ideas, you need to go to your your colleagues that are having success. I know the Elite Advisor Network has people with insane success. Be a part of something like that where you're learning ideas, but a framework. So I'm going to go through four things that you need to, four areas. And I want you to kind of rate the area. And whatever area is weakest, that's the area you're going to focus on. In marketing, I call it the marketing flywheel. It's not a marketing funnel. You have, it's a circle. And then I can send you over an a, a image of this if you want to add it to the notes. But it's a circle and there's attract, engage, convert, delight. Okay. You attract prospects. You attract strangers. You engage with prospects. You convert leads and you delight raving fans, right? When you delight someone and you get an incredible result, they go then attract, engage, and convert for you, right? When I was working in ancient nutrition, we were selling collagen. We were the number one seller of collagen and we would get them in. The, the first thing we would do is we'd get them in, we would get them the results and then Everybody, all the people would go around and be telling everybody else about these results that they're getting with their skin and all this stuff. I was on a date. I remember, I'll never forget this. I was on a date and this girl was like, you can't believe, I, I got to tell you about this collagen product. It's so insane. It's amazing. You got to check it out. It was our brand. I was like, this is a delighted fan. So the purpose of this flywheel is attract, engage, convert, delight. Okay. The attract part of the flywheel, I'm using tactical pieces with this. Attract is capturing, capturing someone's attention, 
right? Attract on an ads, for example, is something that like gets you to stop scrolling. It has to think attract is we got to interrupt their train of thought, right? So attract is, I don't know you yet. It's my first impression of you, right? Attract is making a great first impression. I'm going to go through the whole flywheel real quick, Stan, and then I'll go through examples of each. Engage, right? Once you've met someone, now you can have conversation with them, okay? So engagement is about a two-way conversation, especially with you guys, you're throwing high ticket. You need to have the engaged. If you're running ads, if it drive people directly into a sale, it's not, it's never going to work, right? You need to attract them, engage with them, have conversation with them, understand. This is the key part of engage. You need to get them a win for free. The key part of engagement is you need to get them some sort of win or some sort of breakthrough for free. Then we have convert. In the conversion process, and that might be an area that you're struggling, that also could be an area that you're struggling is, hey, you're, you're in front of the leads, but then you can't convert the leads. This is what I'll say. This is the advice that I'll say around sales and conversion. I don't look for salespeople that are the best, have the best words and say the best things. I look for salespeople that believe what we do works. And if it's you're the person, you need to believe what you do works. If I said, if Sten came to me and said, and he essentially did, he didn't say it in this way, but essentially, like if Sten came to me and said, Dave, if you work with me, you will, there's a 100% chance that this, this, and this issue will be solved, then you're going to have this much money within three years. If there was a 100% chance, right? I would do whatever it took to pay for it, right? If it was a 100% chance. So our belief in what we do affects the sale. The best salespeople believe the most. They believe what they do works the most, right? So in your conversion process, you need to make sure that we're not just doing a generic financial advisor sale, right? And Stan, I know, has some whiteboard videos on this. I think they're actually in circle, but like you're not doing a generic whiteboard sale. Like, no, you're, you're getting them, to, you're, you're not, it's not, and it's not about convincing them. They believe so much that you know what you're doing that it's a no brainer. There's no sale at the end. It's enrollment. It's just like, all right, let's do it. You know, it's the obvious next step. So convert. And then delight is get them the results that you ask them for. There's two parts to delight. I'll give you kind of an advanced tip here. The first part of delight is make sure they get the results. The second part of delight is showing them why. Showing them why it's working. Because when you're talking to your, to a friend about something, like if I said to you, Stan, I just lost 500 pounds. Um, or I, I just lost 50 pounds. Dude, that's great. But people lose 50 pounds all the time. If I say, Stan, I lost 50, 50 pounds and all I ate was bread and bacon and I didn't have to exercise, you would be like, huh, let me tell you, tell me a little bit more about that, right? And so knowing why they got the result allows your, your client to be the best promoter for you. Like, why is Sten better than everybody else? If they know that, then they're, they become promoters and then the flywheel continues, right? Then they're attracting more people in. They're actually doing the engagement part of it, right? Like they're getting them the free win. You know, Sten told me that if you pay your kids with this, this, and this, then it actually leads towards this. Oh my gosh, I'm gonna start paying my kids, you know? So it's like, they're giving people wins. Does that make sense? So it's, it's a circular thing, guys. And when you do it the right way, it doesn't always require more input, right? Like you get enough and the engine starts running on its own. And so let me give examples of each thing. So attract, attract in, on, in brick and mortar, I'll do brick and mortar, like in your town and then online in your town, attract is what we were talking about earlier. It's whatever you got to do to be in front of people, just to meet people, even shake their hand. Hi, my name is Dave Tuhill. Nice to meet you. I'm a fighter. So I work up at the top thing. You're it's first impression, right? So it's being at events, finding your list of, 20 people that are business owners that you go and you just, you, you, you reach out to them or you send them a free gift. You get whatever it is, you get their attention. Attract online is very creative attention grabbing headlines that get them to stop scrolling with these zillion other things that they could do on the internet. When your ad is going along the screen, you have, they say you have about 1.8 seconds to capture their attention. So they're scrolling through to cap. It's those first three seconds. So the attract portion of ad or, or things online is those first three seconds. Okay. Um, the attract for Sten's podcast right now is going to be the title and whatever the bio is and whatever he maybe posts about it on social media. Like that's what will attract people to come in and say, hmm, I want to read more. Attract in an email is your subject line. Some of us have to send out emails to people, but our subject lines are so lame 
that no one would ever click and open up that email. It needs, a track needs to give a promise of something good to happen. Okay. So it's a track. It's just, we're not trying to have conversation with them. It's just being places where it's like, yeah, I saw Dave Tuhill there, you know, engaged is a back and forth conversation. Okay. So on, on in person, it's meeting up with people for lunch. Like I'm working on getting a group of people to meet up with Stan at a, at a restaurant down the street. Where he's just going to show up for lunch and there's a couple of people there, a couple of advisors that are there. He's going to pay for lunch. Not advisors, but cl- prospective clients are there. He's going to pay for lunch. So it's engaged. It's having that back and forth conversation. You're engaging with people and you're starting to position yourself as the expert. They're saying, man, this is this, it's what I was saying earlier. This is what the free stuff. I can't imagine what the paid stuff is, right? Engage is there. Online, LinkedIn, it's being live. You got to be live. You got to be able to have conversations. Right. So if you're not, if you're going to be on LinkedIn or Facebook or Instagram, whatever it is, engage is your live conversation. Engage is come on a Zoom with me. It's back and forth. Right. We, there has to be a conversation. I have to know what you need so I can make sure that I'm the right fit for you. And then, and go ahead. As advisors are listening, if, if the compliance person on your shoulder is kind of telling you you can't do any of this stuff, um, and you've accepted that. It's only the boring, generic, uh, uneffective things that our business allows us to do. You need to reject that voice. It, it may make it harder. Things have to be approved. We may get some things tweaked, but there is a creative, a better way to market than most advisors are doing now, even though we have this compliance barrier we have to overcome. Yeah. And you're not, and even when you're going live, like you don't need to do a question and answer. I mean, again, we were in the supplement space for a while and we were working with the FDA. I mean, and I get, it was, you know, you have to do this and this disclaimer and this is not advice and this and this and this. Let me say this too. When you have your internal audience, you can say whatever the heck you want to. Yeah. At least that's what we did, yeah. right? Because you guys know, like, there's, you know, level 10 non-compliance and level one non-compliance. We're going to be about a four, right? Because you, you want to, we want to be where, hey, they'll give us a slap of the wrist warning before anything bad happens. That's the space you want to stay in because... As much as you guys are doing whatever you're doing, you're not on the radar for a lot of these people. Um, they're not looking for you specifically. But with all that being said, a way that you can get around that is get people onto your email list. Get people onto like a monthly call, a monthly Zoom call that you do for anybody in the town that wants to get on. And you're giving the latest cutting edge strategy for finances based on the, the market right now, you know. Um, but yes, yeah, and I think that's a really good point because I think that we can get frozen by compliance and I saw that happen many times with teams that I've worked with where they got frozen with compliance versus, no, these are just the guardrails. We're still going to play in this field, but these are some of the guardrails that we got to stick to. And Stan, you're a great example of that. I mean, you've, you've had those guardrails and you've been able to bust through. Um, so yeah, yeah. I mean, it's, 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 uh, it's a great time to be marketing. It's a great time to get clients. It's a great time in like time, just if you're listening to this right now, with what's going on in this world, if I were you and you and you said, Dave, what are some of the angles that I would take in my marketing? It would be the world is falling apart, you know, and, you know, your money and inflation and all this stuff. It's more important now than ever before that you're doing the right things with your money because you make a wrong decision, right? In the past, it's like, hey, I had a little bit more leeway, but you have less leeway now. And so it's like, it's just really important right now to have wise counsel around finances and money i would go to my if you're christian i would go to my pastor immediately today reach out to them and be like hey i want to just you know I, I, there's a concern that i have with what's going on in the world and people and all this different stuff and i feel like you know again i'm a believer but like god's people are lost in this that, that would, that's the place that i hang out that's where i would go you know and then i would meet with the the, the church pastor and then maybe the, we would add something to the church schedule where it's like financial advice for christians i don't know you know but I picked that niche. You know, it could be financial advice for CrossFitters. It could be financial advice for business owners, whatever. But I would use, use what's relevant in marketing right now. Yeah, that's great. Use like, what's re- not marketing, but what's relevant in the world right now. Like, guys, there's, there's an election people don't know about. All, this, all these different things are going on. And people now more than ever before need to be wise with their money. And if you don't have advice right now, I say this to people all the time, and I'm not even an advisor. I say this to people all the time that come to me for, for, for money advice. And I, and I just say, if you are not intentional about what you're doing with your finances right now, you can get in big trouble fast. Talk to Sten, you know? Um, so that, those would be just some of the angles I would take. Cool. 
Uh, all right, last two before we wrap up, and then we'll have you back on. I know there's, we can go 10 layers deep. And yeah, we can go uh, in each one. The convert, we said kind of the most belief, which which we spent a lot of time on. Any any hesitation at advisors on being willing to add value or being capable of it, it's going to come through in your energy. It's, it's The person's not going to believe you as much if, if it feels like you're not quite sure on who you are and what you do. Uh, and then delight. Let's, let's end on uh, an advisor has clients already. Uh, most advisors, even ones that aren't great, have high retention. People just don't seem to switch advisors unless they have a compelling reason to do it. So retention is not really maybe the best measure of, do you have a successful practice and are you a great advisor? But a lot of times advisors aren't getting referrals from these clients that are staying with them for a long time. So there's some disconnect there. What would you say practically from a delight standpoint before we wrap up? Yeah, I mean, you have to delight to get referrals first off. So like, if you're not getting referrals, you can't help but refer when you're delighted. So if you're not getting referrals, then you're not actually getting them the result that they expect. If I go, Maggio, or um, Giovanni's, I'm going to go there tonight for dinner. It's an Italian restaurant in Nashville. Chris is the mater d' there. If you ever go there, it's the best Italian restaurant in Nashville, or I think this side of the Mississippi. But like, it's, I go there, they know my name. It's exact, they know the wine like that I like. They, it's like, I'm there with family. Like, I am so delighted by the food, by the staff. I'm telling everybody on every financial advisor that's on this podcast. I've told it to all, I have said thousands of people there. When I have events that I host in Nashville, I say, everybody go there. We clog the place down. When someone is delighted, they can't help but refer, right? And so, yes, we can give some, there's some tools that we can give them to help them refer, like who is someone that you know, or do have a dinner and, you know, bring them and say, hey, I'd love for you to bring a friend, things like that. But if you have not delighted them already, then that's just going to fall on deaf ears. Yeah. And so delight. And so I know that for a lot of advisors, like some, a lot of them, they get assets under management, but they're not charging for their fees. You know, they're not charging fees or charging for their time, which I know that you're, you, you, ma- you have mastered. Like that's part of delight, actually, because if that's like, if they need your advice to get the result that they want to get and you're not providing the advice to them, then it's like, you're just like the guy, you're like the guy, you're like the cable company. It's like, I pay you the bill every month. You take care of something for me versus you are my wise counsel in my life, you know? And I think a lot of this, I think, I mean, a lot of it comes down to is if you're not confident in what you do and in delivering results, then you need to get better. And the best way to get, get better is just practice. Just get on the phone as many people as possible, you know, and like just practice. Like I got good at selling certain things or, or enrolling people just because I did it a lot, you know, and just like for you, it's like you just have done it so many times that like you get to a place where no matter who comes in front of you, stand like, and I sent you, I mean, about a diff- diversity in clients that I've sent over your way from, you know, physicians to, you know, celebrities to different, you know, uh, sports players. But it's like, I just know that Sten's going to give the, he, even if he hasn't had the right answer, he's going to find the right answer. Like he's going to give the best advice. And so my answer with delight is part one, get the results that you promise them. It's critical because you will not become known in your town. None of that stuff will work unless you are getting results for people. And then the second part of it is give them an opportunity if they are delighted and people are like, oh, I would, you know. Let me know, like, I, are there, or maybe you have some of those people that have sent a couple of people into you, right? Reach out to those people again and do something more meaningful. Do you have a sports team in your area? Be like, hey, I'd love to take you to, hey, I got two tickets to whatever. And it's maybe the person that sent you 10 clients already. Hey, I got two tickets to this, this, and this. And then just take them out and just build relationship with them. You'll get another five clients from that, you know? Um, so yeah, I mean, I, I think at the end of the day, Sten, to kind of sum this up, and I know we'll, we'll probably do you know many more of these because we could we could really break down each area. Um, but I think that it's it's really important that if you're isolated, if you find if you're listening to this, and you're like, it's just me. I'm not getting advice really from anybody else. I'm not really looking at anybody else. I'm kind of just using whatever the standard is, whatever I learned in my marketing class in school. Like for you, that should be a wake up call to say you need to start being around people that are having success in this space. Everybody, all of you are in different towns. You're doing different things. If you want to have the highest level of success, you need to be around top level advisors. You need to ask them questions. You can't just be a participant. You need to be actively talking to different people. 
and getting the best ideas and then getting them into those ideas into a system of attract, engage, convert, delight, a process that can start to, you know, crank in people over. This is the, this is the, it sounds complex. It's not. This is the thing that allows the ongoing clients for a long period of time. And it's not every two months, we got to go find more clients. It's like, no, I have a system that works that I just need to feed the system. Good. Yeah, I'll, I'll end with, as you listen, this may feel like a lot. You may say, I'm not a marketer. I always have to kind of center myself when I get a lot of information and go to the three stages of growth, awareness, understanding, belief. My hope is, is now you are now aware there's a better way than what you're doing. The next step is I need to understand what Dave's talking about. We cover a lot of that in our community. Unfortunately, Dave, is at a level in his career where he doesn't work with everyone, uh, which is great. Uh, he's at the top of the game. Our community gets access to you through our friendship. So, th- but it's, this information is out there. So, if right now you're saying, "Okay, I just I'm feeling uncomfortable because they're kind of calling me out the things they said we shouldn't do," I find myself doing, and I'm not getting results. I'm going to get very curious. I'm going to find out if it's joining a community, if it's going to an event, if it's reading books, whatever it takes to understand what the language is that Dave's using. And the final one is the belief piece. And I've found that I have to get around other people. I almost borrow some of their belief. I have to say, okay, you've done it. Tell me how you've done it. Okay, now help help me stay accountable to it. And so practically speaking, my hope is if I are taking away, I've been challenged. I know there's a better way. Now, what is a one or two things I can really focus on? Because try don't try to take off everything that Dave just talked about. I've, I've done that before. And Dave's been working with me for a couple of years on understanding this. And there's still things he'll say that kind of wake me up to a new idea. So it is a process, uh, but it's definitely worth it. Yeah, I I, I give the same advice. Find one thing. Think of, think of what I said before. What would, If you're doing three things and one of those things worked really well and you're like, man, we want to get another four or five people. What was that one thing that always worked really well? Like get back to doing that, you know? Um, but fo- but focus on one thing at a time. I think that's awesome. Right. Yeah, dude, this was great. And again, I- I'm always happy to, um, we could jam for hours on this. Um, and hopefully I'll get to, maybe I'll get to pop into the community a little bit more often and uh, we can jam on some specific topics. So. Sounds good, brother. Right, man, we'll talk soon. Awesome, brother. God bless, guys. <laughs>